Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Higurashi Chapter 2. This is your boy, Colorwood Gaming, and you know how we do things around here. Part 4, baby. Let's get it. I might have explained this before, but... Visit at our school is really just an exercise in disorder. After some random warm-ups, the rest of the time is spent doing whatever. You're free to cause a ruckus or just fall asleep. I don't know. 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 Come to think of it, they might be right. If we all lined up for a race, there was a good chance I would finish dead last if I didn't start off well. Let's just pray that when a brutal penalty game is at stake, the 100 meter dash is in the club activity. That's what I'm talking about. I'm on TV. I'm really sleepy. I'm going to give you a sleep time. I'm going to give you a full time. I'm going to give you a full time. As if Mion is going to let you do that. I'm going to As I began to sprawl out on top of a pipe, Mion grabbed me by the collar. Ch-ch-ch. Told you. まさか大人しく眠らせてもらえると思ってる。あ、told grief. Which means, oh, is it going to start again? さて、このまま井戸端会議でチャイムを待つなんて、熱き血潮のたぎった私たちには無理だ。部活タイム。ちぇ、案の定来上がったな。今日のゲームはなんだ。now that this is happening, taking a nap is impossible. Not just that, with this sleep-deprived head of mine, I'm as good as mincemeat. I have to get my brain into gear. レナはそれより今日の罰ゲームは何かなの方が先だと思うな。レナはわかってるね。今日もとびっきりのを用意してるよ。<laughs> <laughs> She began to announce the cruel penalty game with a grand spinning flourish. But before she could do that... Is she gonna sit this one out? <coughs> of all people, it was Rika-chan announcing her non-participation. Even rare events do eventually occur. Losing her timing, Mion spun like a top as she tumbled to the ground. はあ。何どうしたの今日は調子悪いのあ、そうか。みーちゃん、綿流しの練習だよ。そうですわよ。今度の日曜日ですもの。リカはもうとっくん中なのですわよ。最近は頑張りすぎて、お腕が痛いの
お祭りの話は前にミオンたちからも聞いたけどさ確かリカちゃんお祭りの実行委員なんだよなそれと関係あるのリカちゃんは渡流しの巫女さんだから奉納の演舞をすることになっててねその練習なのあ、come to think of it I have a feeling mom did say something about it during dinner the other day so Rika chan plays the part of a shrine maiden eh? なるほどな確か布団とか土寺の供養だって言ってたよなあじゃああれか演舞か何かでなっおっさすがはけいちゃん察しがいいね綿流しはね名前の通り綿を流すんだよ祭壇にもお布団を積み上げているし This whole thing is so super odd. 綿流しはね毎年6月の日曜日に神社とっても賑わうんだよ。ミオンとレナのドバケミ、looking a bit impressed。It seemed that my observations were on mark. Although, when I first heard about it, I imagined piling futons up in the swamp. But that would block the river, and it would be a real pain to clear up after. それにしても、ご先祖様とか、戦没者とか、針とか、包丁とかの供養ってのは聞いたことはあるけど、布団の供養ってのは初耳だな。どんな言われがあるんだミオン tilted her head pensively. 言われなんてほど難しいのはないと思うなこの辺って冬の寒さはかなり厳しいからね布団とか斑点とかの防寒具を特に大切にしたからじゃないかなああなるほどなつまり冬の間お世話になった布団に感謝しようってわけだで巫女さんが供養をして最後に川に流すわけかそれが綿流しってわけだろミオンとレナはきれいに答えを言ったので、私はきれいに答えを言ったので、私はきれいに答えを言ったので、私はきれいに答えを言ったので、私はきれいに答えを言ったので、私はきれいに答えを言ったので、私はきれいに答えを言ったので、私はきれいに答えを言ったので、私はきれいに答えを言ったので、私はきれいに答えを言ったので、私はきれいに答えを言ったので、私はきれいに答えを言ったので、私はきれいに答えを言ったので、私はきれいに答えを Yeah, it might be cute. ようやく話が見えてきたぞリカちゃんの言う特訓ってのはこのミコさん役の練習なわけだなそういうことミコさんが布団をお祓いする一連のセレモニーを奉納演舞って呼ぶんだけどねそれの練習なんだよ結構大変なんだなこれがミコさんはね祭事用の大きな桑を持って演舞をするんだけどそれがリカちゃんってちっちゃいもんなその重い桑ってどのくらい重いんだかなり重いらしいよリカちゃんは餅つき用のキネで練習してるくらいだから Wait a minute That's way too heavy Forget about リカちゃん That would be rough even for me 祭事用の神聖なクワだからね間違って落としちゃったら大変らしいしまあ年に一度のお勤めだからね私たちは陰ながら応援するしかないね大丈夫去年もちゃんとやり遂げたんだからそっかじゃあさせめて応援してやろうぜそれくらいならいいだろう I was rather curious about exactly how she practiced ミオン laughed as she shook her head ほっといてあげなよケイちゃんが来たらリカちゃんは可愛くなっちゃうから特訓ができなくなるよ I didn't quite understand what ミオンは言うリカちゃんはね努力とかそういうのを人に見せるのが好きじゃないのねそっとしておいてあげて Even though always cool and aloof Rika-chan has times where she sweats while giving it her all Because she was always so well put together She didn't want people to see an ungainly side of her It's not like I couldn't understand that feeling 俺にできるのは成功を祈ることだけってことか頑張れフルデリカー応援してるから Well then I climbed up onto the pipe and plopped down on my side I forgot nap フレークフレーリカーちゃんさらに応援の年波を高めるためこれより瞑想状態に入る結局寝るわけか
The lackadaisical noontime ended up giving way to mind-numbing afternoon classes. Rebounding from yesterday's hunger, I ate too much for lunch today, leaving me in a horrible condition. <sighs> さすがに食いすぎた。午後の授業は答える。ケイチ君、今日は何だかすごい食欲だったもんね。昨日は俺昼飯抜きだったろ。その日も時差が染みついちゃってさ、今度は逆にいくら食っても食欲が底なしってい
suddenly the wall sprang forward, throwing me three blocks away. And there I saw a giant metal ball covered in spikes hurtling toward me. On top of that, in the direction the ball would knock me was a giant gelatine. I always get uneasy when Rena says lie. How could my expression possibly convey what I was thinking like? Sma, Shiorashi Satoko no Sozo Tenoa, Kondo Taicho ga ito gini, Saito Rai ste mirio. Next, I looked over at Rika chan, who was working diligently on some kanji drills. In contrast to Satoko, her default state was meek and gentle. If Rika chan came at me saying Onisama, I would probably hug her. Tightly. I could get used to that. What the fuck? Something's there's something in the fucking water of this motherfucking village, man. Saying that out loud, I felt a tinge of doubt. Was Rika chan really all sweet? Despite her appearance, she was really quite sly, sweetly. How do you put it? Evading things deftly? I couldn't put exactly what I was imagining into words, but Rena managed to say what I wanted to. She turned to me with an impish look in her eyes, like she was saying, Ah, you shouldn't say something like that. I don't care. Rena said that lightheartedly, but I, as a man, couldn't laugh at that. The scary part about that was that it actually felt like it could be true. Noticing my gaze, Rika chan turned towards me and let loose an angelic smile. Both Rena and I, feeling as if it was directed towards us personally, had our hearts skip a beat. Appearances can be deceiving, huh? Well then, what about our dear little Mion? I stared at her as she tried to weasel her way out of a scolding by the teacher. By Rena's theory, that unrefined calculating conniving Mion also had a side of her that belied appearances. Catching on that I was struggling to express my feelings as word, Rena smiled even more brightly. Like she's an old man? That's right. Mion was more than aware that she was a girl, but it was exactly as Rena said. When Mion livened up the mood, it wasn't as though she felt like a guy or a girl specifically, but a friend of the same gender. あいつが男だったら。で、それは今と同じか。でもね、そんなみーちゃんも本当はすっごく女の子らしいんだよ。レナ、お前、ミオにいくらもらったんだよ。違うの。もうちゃんとした話をしてるんだよ。だよ。
Even though she had to hurry to work, she went through all the trouble to bring me food when I was on the brink of starvation. And she did not do so as Mion, but as Xion. What exactly was Xion to Mion? What kind of person was Mion exactly? Shut your face. You're gonna get us in trouble. As if to say it was our little secret, Rena held her finger up to her lips as she giggled. Mion, finally free from the teacher's preaching, returned to her seat, cradling her head to hide her embarrassment. Saying that, she plopped down into her seat violently. Mion was actually really feminine, right. I wonder if I can meet Chion again. I want to talk to her again. Clang clang! The principal waved around the bell that served as the school chime. The teacher rushed back to the blackboard and began to list everybody's homework assignments. の人は見かけによらないって話。レナもってことになるのか？え？ケイチ君にはレナのことどう見えるかな？この。The If she was the opposite of what she seemed, that would make her... Oh my god. Just try saying it. I won't be mad. That's what I felt she meant. Lena wa... Lena wa... Gya... Gyaku ni natte mo... Lena da yo. Daro? This question shouldn't have been so nerve-wracking to answer. Maybe it was because the person in question was staring at me, but... Look, you dumb bastard, you brought it up! Even saying that took a strange amount of effort. How these nuts! Perhaps unable to endure my silence, Rena's face began to burn red with embarrassment. Uh, no club activity? Good, great, awesome. Mion walked over and started getting ready to go home. Whenever school is over, she really does get noticeably more energetic. It was the same relaxing walk home as always. Digging around in my pocket on a whim, I noticed something that should have been there was missing. どこにやっちゃったかな。親はいるから今日はいいけど。まずいよな。それは困るね。忘れてきたの？それとも落としちゃったのかな？Which one was it? Did I take it with me this morning in the first place? あ、え、じゃん。その鍵の特徴は？うん、キーホルダーがついてる。昔夏休みの宿題で作らされたやつで。青い夫性なんだよ。あれ目をつぶった感じでお昼寝してるみたいなやつ。お、なんで知ってるんだよ。そうそう、それだよ。ミアンルックアウェイ Get the fuck out of here! That was a couple of days ago. I should have noticed. I should have noticed my key wasn't on me the day after, at most. As she said that, she suddenly grew flustered and added that Xion had told her about it. Eh? Ano toki ni ka? Demo mitsukatte yokatta ne. Omise ga kitto azukatte kurete ryo. And as if that is, 
a detail that Xi'an would tell me about. Unless Mian is Xi'an is Xi'an is Mian. Woo! Shut up. Let's go together. This was a rather unexpected development. Once again, I had no choice but to go meet with Xion. But I also had to thank her for the bento from yesterday. Besides, taking some time and chatting with this other side of Mion might be interesting. Half jokingly, I began to think about things like this. So, Angel Moto, だけ。塩の店に行って鍵を返してもらって、ついでにお茶でも飲んで優雅に過ごすってのも悪くないな。ふふふふ。なんだか英国紳士みたいだね。ケイちゃんには似合わないかも。ひょっとしてそのお店か
The three of them beeline towards me, and the worn down heels of the thin soled shoes slapping noisily against the pavement. I could only stare listlessly as if I were watching some far off event that did not concern me in the slightest. By the time I realized it, I had been grabbed by the collar and lifted onto my tiptoes. <laughs> The three thugs were completely ignoring the rules of grammar, but the way they spoke was enough to make me tremble. Just like that, my composure drained away. My legs buckled and my throat grew dry enough to crack. I was completely at fault, so there was nothing I could say in my defense. As a result, I was pulled even higher. Your face is scuffed. The three of them continued to yell at me. I had no idea what each of them were saying. Getting further enraged that I was only listening while I dumbstruck, they grabbed an empty plastic crate from a nearby store and began to smash it repeatedly against the telephone pole. Cracks formed in the crates, plastic shards flying everywhere. They then slammed it full force into the shuttered storefront. Smash. The shutter let out a frightened loud noise. Still not satisfied, they flipped over a case of empty cans, scattering its contents all over the place. This was not normal. It was something you often saw on television or in manga, but I never thought seeing it in person would be this terrifying. I became painfully aware that the safety of civilized society was only held up by such frail concepts as morals. My knees clattered together noisily. Static began to pepper my vision. This is what you would call absolute terror. There was nothing I could do to stop this frightening spectacle of violence. I could only pray for help. The fear I felt was just too much. Would somebody please help me? My gaze floundered about the surrounding area. I was surrounded by these three hoodlums. No way would there be a passerby brave enough to intervene. Maybe this is what you call reaping what you sow. If I were a passerby, there would be no doubt that I would ignore what was going on. So this was somewhat of a cosmic retribution. <laughs> Don't do that. Angry yelling loud enough to rattle my eardrum spewed forth right in front of my face. My waning consciousness was forcefully dragged back to the forefront. The thug had cocked back his free hand and twisted his body, when suddenly, a metallic taste filtered through the back of my throat. A chill ran down my spine like a jolt of electricity. Seeing what was going to happen next, I squeezed my eyes shut as tightly as possible and grit my teeth. That noise was a short distance away. Still holding me by the collar, the three thugs spun around to look behind them. Standing there was Shion. I mean Mion. She stood there displaying an imposing stature that I had never seen before. That's me? She didn't have the same look on her face as she did when we were playing around during club. Those were the eyes that would instill fear in anyone who looked upon them. The eyes of a raptor. They were the epitome of terror. At the same time, they were the most reassuring things in the world. <laughs> Mion, without an ounce of fear, laid down her ultimatum. There was no way those three wouldn't go absolutely berserk. The situation instantly turned explosively dangerous. I swear on me, mum! Stop it, Mion. These guys are like rabid dogs. No amount of bluffing will work. Mion, I'm not gonna. I knew what I was saying was pathetic, but I couldn't let Mion get involved in this. No matter how you looked at it, 
Mion was only bluffing. But did Mion even know the meaning of the word bluff? However, the reason behind everything soon became apparent. They were slowly increasing in number, little by little. At first, it was only businessmen on their way home stopping to take a look. Then, it was the housewives in the middle of shopping taking a gander. Next, what seemed like the owner of some store showed up, and it was pretty clear he wasn't just looking. Around Mion, there was already about seven people gathered. It felt like... It felt different than people coming out to support a friend. If I had to say why, it was because the group had gathered was diverse in age and gender. The three thugs seemed to slowly realize that there was something strange about the situation. <laughs> Behind them, at some point, four more people of differing clothes and ages had gathered. A girl who looked to be in middle school. A man wearing a bakery apron. An old lady in a house cleaning smock. More and more people of various ages. Their gazes, comparable to Mion's, were of hostility. Of intimidation. Before I realized it, over 10 people had formed a ring around us. At that moment, five elementary schoolers ran in and joined the circle. There were some familiar faces. Some of our classmates. Then these people were... Residents of Hinamizawa? More and more people from Hinamizawa gathered around. In obvious contrast, the residents of Okinomiya were passing by as quickly as possible. The group surrounding us had suddenly swelled to around 20 people. Completely encircled, the faces of the thugs began to show the first signs of panic. Nobody spoke a word, Mion included. That made everything completely unnatural, and depending on which side you were on, completely terrifying. Only the thugs' voices echoed out like they were screaming. Somebody took a step forward, closing the gap between them. As they did, everybody else took a step forward, shrinking the circle. The hoodlums went pale as they were pushed back together, back to back, while still yelling angrily. They were trying to string together vulgarities, but for some reason it sounded like they were crying out for help. Hey, 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 hey. It was sudden. A solidly built officer cut his way through the crowd. At some point, two police cars had arrived. Some passers-by had undoubtedly called for them. Several burly officers appeared from inside the second vehicle. Ah, <laughs> Mion, returning to her usual self, was nonchalantly pointing out the hoodlums to the police. Mion 69. Hey! Of course, the thugs were furious. But now that it had come to this, there was nothing they could do. It was their loss. The officers handcuffed the thugs and dragged them towards the patrol cars. No matter how much of a ruckus they caused, the officers paid no heed. In the blink of an eye, they were crammed inside the two vehicles. They could still be heard yelling while inside the police cars, but what they were saying was no longer intelligible. There he is. What the fuck? This is so weird. It was probably a detective. The man leading the police peered at my face. The portly man, after taking a quick look around, addressed the crowd. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
The way Xion talked didn't have a very pleasant tone. ですよ。元気の帰り道に結んでんだくが入りましてね。寄り道したわけです。お仕事頑張ってください。今後の5月役を切に祈っております。うん。うん。うん。いえいえ。でも、怪我人が出なくて本当に良かったです。おいさん、
Even though it had started out as such a lovely day, I had to get carried away and do that stupid thing. I had completely ruined it. But I helped you. The last one was really fun. Sion was really fun. I was scared. But I was scared of Kei Chan. I was scared of Kei Chan. I was scared of Kei Chan. While a little embarrassed by what she just said, Xion made a show of folding her arms boldly. I was thanking Xion, but I really want to thank Mion. Mion, really thank you. ほらほらもう元気出してくださいよ。もしも恩義を感じるなら、今度はケイちゃんが他の誰かのために戦ってくださいね。例えば私がピンチになったら、きっと助けに来てくださいよ。<laughs> Taking advantage of my words, she seemed happy about my promise. She said that she smiled herself, poking me in the cheek. <laughs> Thanks to Xion's meddling, I finally cheered up a little bit. All the muscles in my body that had stiffened because of the incident finally began to relax. I want to show a little restraint, but restraint really wasn't my thing. That's why I replied without any. Xion <laughs> ordered some pancakes from a nearby waitress. An employee ordering from another employee seems kinda weird. By the time the pancakes arrived, we had entered into a relaxed conversation. As the two of us ate pancakes, we livened the mood with some chit chat about what was on TV, celebrities, that kind of thing. Hobbies, food, really nothing more than idle chit chat. Talking together like this, I once again became conscious of Xion being a girl. Huh, <laughs> that's funny talk, Keichi Maibara. Xion and Mion are the same person. If there was anything different between them, it was only whether or not Mion admitted she was Mion. But given that, how come our conversation was this different? Y'all really need to stop reading my mind. そ、そんなこと男だったら容赦なくどつき倒してる。ケイちゃんとお姉が仲がいいのってそういう脳セクシャルな関係にあるって思うんです。それってなかなかできない羨ましい関係ですよ。言ってる意味がよくわかんないが
なあ,あごめんうん聞いてるよ例えばですよ私とお姉が共にピンチでうん崖にぶら下がってるとしますケイちゃんはどっちを助けますどっちか一人だけですよ She wasn't saying it to tease me, but had a playful tone behind her voice. I don't know what I'm saying. 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 If it were Mion, I don't think she would be in that situation in the first place, as it's something she could easily get herself out of. But what about the normal frail Shion? I guess I would have no choice. お姉じゃないですよね。If Mion and Shion were different people, I suppose it would come to that. I couldn't confirm nor deny it. She should have been smiling, but her gaze was locked firmly to mine. つまり、そういうことなんですよ。お姉はそのつまり、あれ<笑>すみません。なんか自分で言ってて破綻しちゃいました。Xion was trying to talk in a light hearted manner, but I felt there was something more behind her words. Was Mion trying to tell me something through Xion? Not being able to put a finger on exactly what it was was kind of vexing. Xion, to hide her embarrassment, turned the conversation around. So, the other thing is, what do you think about it? So, the other thing is, what do you think about it? So, the other thing is, what do you think about it? いろいろと集まってくるんだからなあれ全部ひなみざわの人なんだろうええそうですひなみざわの人はみんな結束してるんですよ the hell were they all doing here? 一人の敵は全員の敵日和みなんか誰もしません、hmm. <笑>結構頼もしい住民性なんですよ誰かがいじめられたらみんなで結束してやっつけるわけかなんだかマフィアとかヤクザみたいな結束だなそんなこと言っちゃダメですよとてもありがたいことなんですからケイちゃんもそれに助けられたんですよ感謝の気持ちを忘れないように I half heartedly agreed I knew full well I should be appreciative ひなみざわの人たちって本当に仲が良くて結束してるんだな昔からの伝統かな南沢って昔からいろいろと敗損の危機に遭うんですよねそのたびに結束して戦って存続を勝ち取ってきたっていう歴史があるんですよ例えばケイちゃん南沢ダム計画って知ってます Here we go. 南沢ダムプロジェクト Let's see I feel like I've heard somebody talk about it before 10年くらい前にね突然ここにダムができてひなみざわが丸ごと水没するって話になったんですよ。Ten years ago, you say? あそんな話親父かなんかに聞いたことがあるようなでもそれって確か中止になったんだろ中止にさせたんですよみんなで団結してだからこれは戦って勝ち取った勝利なんです。That sounded pretty much like the story I heard. The protest intensified to the point where it was featured in newspapers and magazines. As a result, the plan was suspended. Dam の話そのものは、私が生まれる前からあったらしいんです。最初は、候補地調査とか、砂防のための小さいダムとか、そんな程度の話だったんですよ。The cat was let out of the bag. If it were completed, it would have been the biggest dam in Japan. Not just Hinamizawa, but several villages upstream would have been submerged as well. The protest immediately began. Petitions to cancel or relocate the project were drafted and submitted to the Diet. They even went so far as to go to the Ministry of Construction in Tokyo to. Hand over a direct appeal to the minister. I mistakenly hit the key. The previous landowners sued the government, stating that there were inconsistencies in purchase agreement and the transaction should be nullified. 
owners of yet unacquired land split their properties, increasing the number of landowners in order to stifle the project. Smart. そのうち土地の強制収容をちらつかせるようになりましてねその頃からです機動隊とかの暴力行為が目立ち始めたのは機動隊って警察だろ暴力行為なんてするのかよ殴りますよ蹴りますよ私も殴られたことありますしこの
just a year prior or within that same year? She couldn't have been more right. So many people got together to help me out when I just moved here. Even though they were strangers whose names I did not even know. A hot feeling began welling up inside of me. When I lived in the city, I didn't even know my neighbors. I thought it was natural. But here? That was an absurd and pathetic thing. Even though I thought of them as strangers, all the other villagers viewed me as a comrade. Happiness and warmth. I was acutely aware of those feelings as they gradually welled up inside of me. A more senior waitress waved her hand and called out to Xion. It seemed like it was time for work. あ、帰っちゃいます。なんてプラン。まあな、飯の時間には戻らないと、お袋がうるさいし。Just I was about to say that I could stay for a bit longer when Xion got up from her seat. I thought you said it was on the house. Saying that, she showed me a coupon booklet that she tore out a few sheets and handed them to me. おやおや? She said that she laughed, gently stopping me from opening my wallet. Being told so with such encouraging smile really resounded with me. Later, today was fun. Seeing that, Xion smiled at me one more time. You keep saying Mio. Is she gonna take the bait? Huh? Yeah, I bet she did. I didn't know if she realized it or not. She's probably sick and tired of you now, at this point. Lazing around and watching television after dinner was part of my daily routine. It might seem like a waste at first glance, but you could say it was an important time when I was able to accrue knowledge of everything from politics to economics to various trivia. After dinner was valuable time well spent while the brain was at its most supplied with nutrients. Baka, baka. Tokyo Tower no hoga takai ni Today, I tested my knowledge of trivia by watching my weekly quiz show. Sitting in front of the television, I was able to get a lot of answers right. But if I were actually up on stage, I would probably fail miserably. Kenji, Sonozaki san kara denwa yo. Ayo, Sonozaki? Mion ka? Or Shion. It was a little late for her to be calling. I had a bad feeling about this. I had a hunch it was something to do with club activities. She was probably going to inform me about what we were doing tomorrow. This was Mion we were talking about. She might even go so far as saying we're doing club activities right now, so hurry up and come over. By the way, it was 8pm. It was Mion. But it was a very un on like way of talking. Huh? Could it be... For Mion, this would have been an ill-fittingly polite way of talking. But since it was Xion, it was natural. Even though they were both the same person. 
With a dry smile, I enjoy that mysterious feeling. Yeah, it's me. So, really, none of the Yes. There was no way I hated them. I'm an unabashed glutton. Looks like they have a new dessert menu every season. So they were hiring taste testers for potential desserts. ジャーンと言われてもいかがですかいかがですかってつまりなんだよそのチケットで俺が死んでた後食い放題とそういうわけなのかそういうわけなのか They say beware of honey pots, but this is sweeter than any pot of honey. All you can eat free dessert? No way! モニター当選者の末番に名前を書いておきますね。明日お店に来たら係の者に名前を言ってください。それで万事オッケーですから。万事オッケーって。それで食べ放題なのか？Yes, you dance fuck. 無料なのか？え、無料です。結構ありますから、お腹を空かせてくることをお勧めします。This was such a delectable opportunity. It was almost scary. This was really Xi'an, right? It wasn't me on posing as Xi'an in order to bait me into a trap, was it? What am I saying? They're the same person. はい、はい。ケイちゃんの考えてることは分かってますよ。こんな美味しい話があるわけないって思ってるんでしょ。ギグ。いや、そんなことは全然。お姉から聞いてますけど、つくづく嘘のつけない人なんですね。私、そういう
Kumatanikun and the others must have been squeezing them pretty tightly. <笑>お兄さんたち誤解しないでくださいよ。別に逮捕したわけじゃないんだから。熊ちゃん、冷蔵庫から集めたいの出してあげてください。お兄さんたちは泡の出る麦茶と出ない麦茶どっちがいいです
警察が税金使って兄さん方のバイクを運びして死んぜよって言ってんだよごちゃごちゃ言わねえでナンバー言ってんだこのクソバカ野郎 The three were hesitant to tell him the numbers. They were mumbling something along the lines of not remembering them since they just bought the bikes. Ha, <laughs> that's what I thought. Kuma chan, get to shani doko ste bike mo te kita agate. Go tsui yakai yatsu to tel lamp no mini gawa ga wareta yatsu. Ato sheet ni gamute hatte atta shiroi yatsu. Sore daro, ni san tachi no bike. So they have been on your radar for quite some time. They didn't answer. Those must be the right ones. Oi, sir! Gate is here, I'm going to go. Yes, yes, I'm going to go. And then, Kuma, just a little bit. What's that? I'm going to ask you a number. I'm going to take a wrong bike. The three people's faces changed color. When they look up the numbers, they're gonna notice that these three bikes don't belong to these three people. They made themselves very easy to understand. Bike, go back to the car and drink a little bit. There's a beer. There's a lot of beer. There's a lot of beer. Do you watch TV? I'm not doing it, but... I'm going to go. 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 Suddenly, there were like five or six huge officers surrounding them. Their clearly overpowering stares nailed them to the sofa. Going on a trip by stealing motorcycles, huh? Students these days have too much time on their hands. And with that, we are indeed going to call it an episode. This has been your boy, Kyogre Gaming Man. I'm out of here. Love y'all and deuces. <laughs>